Playing a game for the first time and not knowing anything about it can be such a great experience. Seeing fantastical worlds, reading enriched stories, and learning unique gameplay mechanics can be such a joy to do on your own. But at the same time, having some base knowledge before you go diving into a game can really help determine if the game is for you or not, and maybe save you a few bucks down the road. This video will bring you through the top 5 things I wish I knew before playing Blasphemous on the PlayStation 4. Number 5. This game is more Metroidvania than Souls-like. I initially went into Blasphemous expecting flashy combos, brutal gameplay, and the need to think quickly. While I ended up seeing these elements, I definitely was not ready for the insane platforming, the crazy tactics of enemies and bosses alike, and the occasional feeling of hopelessness as I kept dying on the same section over and over again. If I hadn't already played games like Salt and Sanctuary, I would have been pulling my hair out in frustration and uninstalling the game within its first few hours. While the enemies are all unique and interesting, their attack patterns and the amount of damage they can put out is equally as unique and infuriating. Combine this with some deadly obstacles and terrains, and a dash of vaguely told story, and you can quickly kiss any ounce of sanity that you had goodbye. Number 4. Exploration can be deadly. With every open-ended game, there will always be some risk when trying to go for those extra bits of lore and secrets. While some games have things like traps and pitfalls, making you lose health gradually, urging you to find your way out of your predicament, Blasphemous has a more straightforward approach. You either succeed in grabbing the secret, or you die. Spikes in this game are possibly the thing that killed me the most in my playthrough. I wouldn't be surprised if all of my deaths to spikes were greater than my deaths to every enemy in the game combined. I skipped over many secrets and side quests purely because I didn't feel like dying to another missed jump over a spike pit. Number 3. This game won't hold your hand. Now by no means am I a completionist. Typically I do a blind run of any game that I play, and I may go back once or twice to look for any particular lore that interests me. That being said, I finished playing Blasphemous feeling quite unfulfilled, and that's mostly due to how the game handles side quests and upgrades. While the items in Blasphemous give every single item these extensive lore descriptions that really help you better understand how the world works for the game, these items really do fail to inform you of what you're supposed to use them for. I had several essential items that just stayed in my inventory for the entire game as I had no idea who to bring them to or if I had met the right NPC yet. Upgrades aren't much better either, especially for rosary beads and healing upgrades. While the game informed me at the beginning that these two aspects could be upgraded, I actually discovered how to upgrade them accidentally, and I wasn't even able to get all the upgrades as they were all optional. Number 2. Prayers aren't needed. Besides swordplay, Blasphemous provides variety in gameplay via prayers, powerful abilities designed to help you beat any opponent. At least, that's what they're supposed to do. Throughout my playthrough, I was able to grab a majority of the prayers the game had to offer. Besides my initial testing with each one, or occasionally using one on a boss to check the damage, I never used prayers. They didn't seem worth the investment, as they had these long charge-up times and used the same meter as your ranged attack upgrade. Half of the bosses you fight can't even be hit by most of the prayers in the game. Meanwhile, the ranged ability you get for your mea culpa takes very little of your focus meter and can hit any enemy from most ranges since you can use it in midair, and once it's upgraded, it even does more damage than some of the early game prayers. My prayer slot was almost always set to the one that allows you to boost your attack speed, and even then, I rarely used it because of how insignificant the boost was. Number 1. The game is non-linear, but doesn't adjust for being non-linear. Probably the biggest thing I wish I had known was that I could go literally anywhere in Blasphemous, and not only would Blasphemous not stop me, but I would face its full wrath even with my scrawny beginner penitent one. If you had seen the playthrough of Blasphemous on this channel, you would know that there is a conversation with the wonderful rope-bound scroll carrier named Dale Gracious, 
where he mentions where I must go in order to perform the three great humilities. Basically, the three checkpoints I need to get to in order to progress the story. The first one that he mentions is a snowy mountain, so of course, I first assume that I need to be looking for the snowy area. Little did I know that this was actually the last area that I should have went to, as the enemies did immense amounts of damage, and the boss for the area was seemingly impossible. In contrast, the usual non-linear game will tie game difficulty to a character level or story checkpoints to keep things somewhat fair. Blasphemous is an entirely new beast, where no such feature is found. Regardless, I tried again and again to progress through the area, with the thought of, hey, this is Blasphemous! I knew things would be difficult. After beating the boss of the area and progressing to the new areas, I quickly realized that I made a mistake taking out the next three regions and two bosses without breaking a sweat. Not only did this seem unsatisfying and odd for me, but it also made me question if my struggle at the very beginning was even worth it, for if I had known about this alternative path, climbing that mountain could have been so much easier. Now, none of this is a bad thing, just a word of advice. Deo Gracious is lying. Don't climb the mountain first. If you see even a hint of snow, go in the opposite direction and don't look back until you defeat at least one other boss. You'll thank me later. And those are the five things I wish I knew before playing Blasphemous. If you plan on giving this game a shot, please do yourself a favor and consider these five things. And if you like this video, do me another favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content on Blasphemous. And when you do play it, Come back and tell me if these tips actually helped you out during your playthrough. I really want to know. See you soon.